Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Hope you had a good day in the market. It's Friday, December 17th, 2021. Uh, we're going to talk about GameStop, the market, what it's doing in the future, some technical analysis, my margin call, my assignment on shares, why my account says I'm up 30k on SPY, sub up, like up, comment down, happy money sticks around. Uh, we have a Twitter. You can follow us on here at happy money. YT, we also have a Discord server. Link for that is in the description. And RC actually tweeted oop, today. So I retraced the other poop tweets he's made and historically it hasn't caused any price action on the subsequent days. So there you have it. Not expecting anything from that tweet, even though it's always nice to see a pile of smiling poop. Spy today, down, down uh, almost a percent, and seems like it's setting up for a pretty good correction crash, I would say. This triple top it kind of made, and this last one being the blow off the top. I didn't notice it yesterday, but uh, this is actually divergence we have here too on the RSI. Right here and here, higher highs, lower highs in the RSI. And now that's confirmed with today's move to the downside. We have red under the nine moving average and it looks like the MACD is going to close bearish. So uh, now that it's rejected that that level three times, uh, I think it's probably on its way down. I'll talking about rate hikes three times instead of two times next year and the year after. Um, I've heard, you know, one of the sayings is the first reaction is usually wrong. This was the first reaction from Powell. And now we're kind of seeing the actual more uh, rational reaction, I think, in the beginning of it. So um, we do have bearish plays. Two of them on SPY got uh, assigned this morning. Or I guess it was last night. Well, this morning I woke up and I had hundreds of SPY shares and covered calls. So whenever that got assigned, it happened to me this morning, as well as my put credit spread on GME. I had... 800 more shares of GME, yay, uh, with protective puts on it, uh, and I had a margin call for like $700,000. <laughs> yeah, today was a little stressful working it all out. It's, uh, yeah, so we'll get into that. Anyways, um, GME price action looks good. Green over the nine, it's got a bull flag here. I'm, I'm hyped. It was a big day. I'm not trying to get too excited though. I'd like to see these longer time frames shift. Uh, I don't expect it just to V unless we're squeezing. So that's kind of what I've nailed it down to for me. If we do just go straight up and there's no mo no kind of uh, consolidation and floor building and then momentum to the upside and it just goes up, I'm gonna say that's probably a squeeze. And up means like, you know, crazy. If it is more momentum and then we start going up, I'm going to say cycles, rollover, pinches, whatever, until we get to a certain point. And if we go past that certain point, which would probably be 350 or so, then I'd say, okay, the squeeze seems like it's on, especially if the spy is dumping when we're going. So uh, that's kind of my thought on, I guess, the price action last few days. Looks good. It's it's building up, but we're still bearish on the daily. Daily MACD is still bearish. Um, we are set up a floor. But this, this actual, this move right here kind of reminds me of back here. Remember back here, bearish MACD. It was just after a peak, bearish MACD. He's kind of grinding up candles. MACD never flipped and then pulled back off. Not saying that's gonna happen here, but until we get a full momentum shift on a longer time frame, uh, these short moves, uh, I'm not thinking it's gonna be something like this yet or this. Unless we get a very unusual event like in February where we're like that. So. I'm I'm waiting. I'm cautious on opening up. Definitely more put credit spreads. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll we'll go over my account. It's very confusing. I don't I don't I think I made some money on the spy though today. I don't think I made thirty five grand on it, but I think I made a few thousand. The GME positions I closed most of them, and I actually lost some shares today also. Uh, I got liquidated. I did get liquidated of some of my GME shares. I bought them up here at a nice high, you know, high and proud cost basis to 20 something on my shares. 
comes down here and we're expecting a lot of upside and I get liquidated. So I, <laughs> I suck at this. Uh, anyways, yeah. Tesla, we have nice, nice little short term positions for the upside, but I don't know. I kind of want to open up some bearish positions because longer term, this thing is definitely still bearish. Um, it's hard, hard to know. I mean, I'm seeing this, this triple RSI divergence, but it is on the hourly and the hourly has let me down before. So, um, you could say this is just kind of setting up, uh, no, it's not even really a bear flag. I don't know. We'll see. I, I think this is going to spring up. I think we're going to see some upward price action on this before it goes down because, uh, because of, yeah, because of that TA. But longer term, it's definitely, I think, still coming down. It is interesting, though, today, it opening up so low and then ripping up, it filled in that gap at 9.10. So I've been waiting, waiting for it to fill that gap for a while. Um, now there's further gaps down here, and I think those will get filled. Um, and it might start on Monday, so it might just keep coming down. And we'll have to just see what happens then. Yeah, about 40 minutes to close. Um... Hopefully some LRC news. That's that would maybe send GME send it up quite a bit. I think today price action. We it was a quad witching day today, so all the options, futures, um, swaps, I, all all the different basically derivatives, the four different ones you can uh, you can trade. They all expired today, so it happens. I think it happens once a once a quarter, and today was that day. And I, I think that was part of the reason for the price action day on GME. Them having to roll over swaps, cover some positions, um, so roll over their options, whatever. I think that's why we saw some of that. So, but I mean, in a longer picture, it, it's kind of just getting back to more uh, sustainable levels. Because down here at the 130s, I don't think that's really where it wants to be. But that being said, after it consolidates here, it could keep coming down. Really still waiting on that to, uh, to show its longer term momentum. So yeah, here's... Here's the account, and it says we're up 33 grand today on the day, and then the SPY. So what happened was I had uh, call credit spreads on SPY, and this morning I opened up the account, and I have no buying power. My value of my account's down. I've, I've basically have nothing. And I start looking through. I'm like, looks like I got assigned on something. And I have a margin call on my account for, you know, almost, I think it was almost a million dollars. I don't know. Maybe half. It was, yeah. I didn't, I didn't look at it too long. Try not to freak out. Just chilled and uh, tried to look through it. I didn't get on my computer very early. I basically got on it at open. So <laughs> it was a little stressful. I was trying to figure out what was going on. But I looked through my spy plays and I saw that I had been assigned. I had lots of shares. So if you want to look at this, you can tell me how much... How much we're up or what what exactly happened you can see but it looks like right here so look we had four thousand okay yeah yeah i think we did make money on it so i had five thousand shares of spy this morning from the assignment and i believe covered calls on all of them yeah 50 covered calls so what happened i believe is spy opened up and went down and the covered calls the calls lost value quickly and I was just watching it and trying to just figure out when to close it. And I, I wasn't even sure. It's, it's hard to think when things are happening so fast. And it's large amounts of money that... <laughs> yeah. So yeah, here's here's half a million right here at 414000 And this one is $1.8 million. So anyways, um, yeah. So I, yeah, $1.8 million And there's... So maybe the margin call is for like $2 million, I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I noticed SPY was going down and these were gaining value. For whatever reason, I was trying to figure out, like, why are they gaining value to have these shares now? But I, I closed them within probably the first five minutes because SPY was very oversold. It was on the five minute. It was really low. And, like, I definitely want to try and hold these and finagle this. So I closed them once it said open that gain. Don't know what I gained on it. Um, I think I think it was maybe, like, four grand. I don't know why this is showing 34 uh i some of this is from gme this 34 but um i could probably figure it out from these numbers here but anyways yeah did that and then just carried on through the day closed that one i'm like wow it's cool i think i made some money on that even though it seemed like i was gonna lose a bunch 
and then notice later in the day that uh, I, <laughs> I still had an issue and I had no buying power and I was like, what's going on? And then I noticed that I had shares of GME assigned on my put credit spread. And that was when GME was, you know, that, that had that at open. So GME ripping up today, it, it, uh, it made it more comfortable, but for me to basically get out of the position I'd been margin called for, I needed GME to go up to 217 and a half by close, which I didn't expect to happen. So I slowed down on that one and just watched it and tried to figure out, I was talking, talking to E-Trade, talking to some of you in Discord, shout out to you guys that uh, helped. Um, and kind of just trying to figure it out. And basically I was, uh, yeah, I didn't have enough buying power to roll over this put position or this credit spread or to even close it because I was negative on it. Um, so their margin requirements on GME again are still super high. I think they're hundred percent uh, and maybe 200% for a short position. And when I'm, I have a credit spread, I have a short position on one of the legs. So I think it's pretty jacked up, especially because, uh, especially because the, the borrow fee on GME is, it's not indicative of it having such high margin requirements. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Like if there's high margin requirements, why would there be such a low borrow fee? And this borrow fee went up by the way. <laughs> from half to 1%, so 100% increase, wow. Uh, yeah, and there's apparently plenty of shares to short and whatever, but they want high margin requirements on it. So yeah, basically, it, as you see here, now I have 480 shares of it. So I lost, they actually ended up liquidating before even noon. Their margin department is so strict on GME. Um, before noon, they, they actually sold off 320 of my shares so that they could cover, uh, cover the short position. And then it left me with uh, 800 shares still. So then I had 1,200 something shares. And then a put, a, a protected put. And um, basically, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's, be very careful messing with spreads, especially, especially rolling them over. I've, I've done this before, I swear. <laughs> no, I've done this before where I, I waited too long to roll. And once they get the money, it's best to roll before expiration. Um, I think some of you were saying it's maybe hedge funds that were exercising or assigning them so early. There's no reason to do that that early, but I'm not sure. Um, but anyways, so I closed. Yeah, so they took my shares. I was trying to figure out how to get them back. I didn't have any buying power. And then I ended up just closing the 800 shares that were assigned to me with the protected put. And, uh, and I got my buying power back. So now... I mean, I lost on the trade, and this this one I'm actually gonna let go, or I closed I closed the other one. Jimmy, I'd like to roll this put credit spread, but uh, I don't want to get just excited on just this one day action because I, I want to see some longer longer term momentum, like I said. Uh, but yeah, so I decided not to roll the other put credit spread. I still have this one for next week, which is much closer to the money. Those other ones were uh, like over 200, so it would have been hard. And that being said, I might sell puts to get my shares back. And once once I think the momentum shifted north. So anyways, I have cash buying power now and I maybe made money on a spy assignment. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this is where we're at. And uh, yeah, let's see what else we did today. Very confusing. Very, 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 and the way it's laid out is very confusing on E-Trade and then how stuff like just doesn't work or it says something weird. And so I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if it's not displaying it right. So every time I try something, I'm basically closing out, opening it back up, and then sometimes it would work. Uh, yeah, the squeeze is gonna be crazy. I'm glad I have multiple brokerages, but yeah. Anyways, um, so I sold some stuff off. I sold my Orb shares, sold my TCAT shares. Uh, Closed out of that. Opened up actually another spy credit spread. I was like, well, the last one worked good. Why don't we just do it again? This is a bearish one call credit spread. Not not as big. It's for next Friday. 462, 463. Um, I really need some bearishness on Tesla. I just don't want it without more of a bounce. And when and when this looks like this, it makes me feel like it's gonna go up. So I'll I'll just have to wait on that. Unfortunately. 
Jimmy next week. I mean, I know Gurk is saying fail to deliver exposure. Uh, it could. Again, it, it definitely could, and we could, you know, rally back up to a higher, kind of higher floor. One thing I do notice is how similar this price action is to last year, and I was keeping an eye on it, um, but this is, today's December 17th. So December 17th is right here. Notice these three days. These are smaller, smaller moves intraday, but it's kind of a similar, kind of a similar price action. We have, uh, kind of have a little sell off and then we found a floor and now we're kind of breaking this high back here. And so this would make me think next week we might have a big, a big candle day. You see, we kind of, kind of sold off here and then Oh, I thought we broke that resistance. I guess we haven't broken that one yet. But anyways, I, it's th we could be setting up something similar to, to last year. But uh, stressful day. I, I think I think we made some money on it. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah. Anyways, this account here, I opened up a 165 call and a 205 call. I meant to have that to be a debit spread, but this one's not short. It's as long as so I just have two calls now on that one for next week. And our this calls and expire worth us for this week, unfortunately. Okay, I closed out the shorted calls. So I had three shorted calls. I'm not holding any covered calls overnight on GME in case there's news and we gap up. I did have that covered call on, on this account on Webull member for next Friday. I actually closed it today for just a tiny gain. But I decided I didn't want to hold it over the weekend. So <clears throat> That's, that's what I got going on. I appreciate you guys' support. I hope you have a good weekend. Try and relax. Oh, I got some, I averaged down on my VIX calls too. Or no, I haven't yet. It hasn't filled. Let's go up. I think next week could be crazy on, dude. Uh, wow, that did actually go up. I think next week could be crazy. The market could really take a dump next week. So, I probably should be selling more shares. Starbucks puts are up. They unionized, I guess. Went, it's gone through somewhere. Uh, yeah, I probably better get off to make sure there's nothing else I have to do here. See you on Discord, guys. Thanks for joining and viewing. Peace out.